Hello there everyone, welcome back to another session. This time I can actually talk, and I'm not- and it's not like two in the fucking morning and I have people texting me telling me to shut the fuck up, because I'm talking too loud. Now I can talk as loud as the fuck I want. <coughs> that caused me to sneeze, I apologize. I'm putting my headphones in everyone. Welcome to another session, as you can tell, I think I'm probably going to be uploading the entire sessions of uh, me doing it. I've done it before, that's why the two recent videos, one was 40 and another was around a minute and 10 long. Alright, so, um, let's see. I have no idea where to go. I kind of forgot what happened. I know we unlock people's hearts to be able to... The true darkness within their hearts. All right, let's try criminal criminal affairs. Oh, what the hell is that little toy over there? Look at that! What the hell? Ah, March twenty first, police station, criminal affairs department. Detective, detective, detective Gumshoe said they had an investigation briefing. Yeah. Oh, uh, he's back. Hey, you came, pal. Why the blunt greeting? Um, because there's nothing to be friendly or happy about. What do you mean by that? Well, things look perfect this time around. The evidence and testimony is alright. But, but, we can't just roll over and die. We have to stay positive. <laughs> As we roll over and die. Alright, evidence. Oh. <laughs> I like how I said alright and then evidence because I, you know, when I do transitions or anything along those lines, I always say, alright. So that's great. Quick, so good water, so let's go. So what do you mean by the evidence is all right? I can't give you all the details, pal, but there's two big plea pieces. It's two? And both of them are this photo. Are in this photo, huh? The first is a button. What's missing from the victim's chest? Is that where it's being stabbed at, I believe? Um, where the breasts are, because you can see on the on the well, if you're looking at the picture, um, on his right breast, if you're looking at the picture, not his actual, that would be his left, but you know his right breast, um, the one that's not stabbed. Does that have a button? Button? Is that the button it's talking about? I don't see any missing buttons per se, from the victim's chest. So is it on the left where the stab wound is? That's the button that you found during your body search of Mr. On Guard. Yup. <laughs> I found it in the folds of the Nickel Samurai special pants. Um, uh, and the second one is... The knife in his chest, pal. The fingerprints on the knife in his chest, to be exact. Fingerprints? Um, what are those? Whose are they? Uh, you didn't even have to ask, little missy. It's obvious. They're mad on guards. Tomorrow's trial. Talk about being stuck between a rock and a hard place. Yeah, he used it correctly. Alright. <laughs> oh, it's airtight evidence. I thought it said alright evidence. Okay, my mistake. My B, everyone. My B. <laughs> uh, so what about this airtight testimony? It's the old security leader. The lady. Missile bag. I thought so. What do you mean? You thought so. Did she tell you something, pal? Um, well... And I even told her not to open that big mouth of hers to blab or blab to anyone. And blab, whatever. Her blab knob is stuck on 10 and there's no turning it down. Trust me. Yeah, well, Miss Obag saw it, pal. She saw Mr. On Guard come out of the victim's room and estimate a time of death. Uh, no way! Oh, great. So I guess we gotta start presenting shit to him, right? Alright, Mr. Gumshoe. What do you think of... This? The stuff in that glass is tomato juice, pal. Tomato juice. <laughs> Should've had a V8. <laughs> I heard the victim really loved this stuff. Favorite drink in the world. My favorite is chalk, um... Chocolate milk with ice cubes, and you gotta mix the chocolate milk in said ice cubes, and it tastes amazing. I don't know, it does something. It was his favorite drink? First time I heard that. In the picture, it was actually poured in the picture, it was actually there. 
What can you tell me about the guitar case? Oh, that? This is just what I heard, pal, but that's the Jam and Ninja signature item. But the guitar wasn't in the hotel room. Yeah, we look for it too. It's not normal for a person to forget to bring their most famous item to an award show. It's starting to sound like the red guitar is related to the case after all. We were pretty interested in a bit of gossip ourselves. The scandal of Miss Corita? But why? Well, two years ago, a woman committed suicide. What? Suicide? Her name is Celeste Inpax. And she was Juan Corita's manager. Ah! The victim's manager? But that's not all, pal. Miss Inpax was Miss Adrian Andrews' mentor. She taught Miss Andrews everything she knew about the business from square one. Her mentor? A woman with both, who both Mr. Corita's manager and Miss Andrews' mentor. Did her suicide have something to do with this case? Obviously, if it's being brought up, it's going to. <laughs> the person that kidnapped her is actually a girl, huh? My, that is, and did I... Did the dirty deeds. Dumb, dirt, cheap! Dirty deeds! Dumb, dirt, cheap. Okay, anyway. Do you want to know more about her, pal? Oh, okay. Sure, I'll talk. Well, you'll talk, but, you know. Whatever. Alright, Celeste Impacts. <laughs> Celeste. It could be, it could be Celeste. Hmm. She was the victim's manager and was also Miss Adrian Andrews' mentor. Uh, it's been two years since her suicide and now those two are linked again by another death. Or maybe it's just a coincidence, but... Ugh! I'm getting sick of dealing with one foolish idiot after another. M Miss Von Karma! You can't see to stop. I. Uh, you can't seem to stop allying yourselves with the enemy and enemy. I'm an enemy, enemy. Can you? I don't need a traitor in my midst. You, you, you don't. You don't mean. I do, Scruffy. You have thirty minutes to get out of here. You are no longer needed. Goodbye. That. That's. But wait. But please, wait, wait, sir. If I don't go get this monster, quiet. If I weren't for if it weren't for traitors like you. Whoa, what? I would have won, is that what you would say? Who? That voice. E Edgeworth! It's been a long time, right? That's this person. Is this Mr. Edgeworth? <sighs> what am I going to do with you? Still blaming others when things go wrong? You haven't changed a Brit, Franziska. <clears throat> oh, lovers me, yeah. You. How dare you show your face to me without a shred of shame upon it? You soiled the name of Don Karma name and dragged it through the mud. Run away with your tail between your legs like the ill breed dog you are. Are you talking about the Von Karma family creed? To be perfect in every way? Then let's hear it, Franziska. How's things going? I hear you're having a rough time maintaining perfe uh, perfection in this country. Y you You seem to be getting crushed under the weight of it all. That's why I came back. Keep your assumptions to yourself. I... I haven't given in yet. I... I won't lose. The case is mine. I'll never hand it over to you. Never. Mr. Phoenix, right. I will see you tomorrow in court. It will be a uh, clinical lesson of the meaning of total victory. Total non-stop action. Uh, so the same wild mare she always was. I never liked his eyes. He always looked like a fucking idiot to me. Anyway. But... We all gotta love the fruffle on the on the neck, right? The ladies love the fruffle. Tomorrow's trial. I thought you, the prosecutor, Miles Edgeworth, had gone and died. Mr. Nick! I... I never wanted to see you again. I think that's enough of a warm welcome for someone you haven't seen in a year. 
Are you gonna run run tomorrow's trial? You heard her right. The wild mare hasn't given in yet, it seems. So no, I don't think we'll be making an appearance. You're making an appearance. <laughs> Your hatred for me is quite unhealthy, not to mention one-sided. But I'll say one thing. You can't win on your own at that trial tomorrow. What was that supposed to mean? I have some definit uh, something definitive that you lack. And that's the definition of teamwork. It's the power to find the truth. The truth? In order to understand this case, you have to understand a certain truth. Well, if you have feel the need to, um, for my assistance, it's available to you. I'm not in charge of this case, so I can be a little more generous with information. Just what is going on inside his head? Proof of Von Karma blood. A lot of things may have happened, however, Manfred Von Karma was still my mentor. And a perfect record is proof of Von Karma- that sounded weird. One year ago. Can I not establish guilt in few cases? Are those losses the reason you suddenly disappeared from the prosecutor's office? Did you leave because you had lost your perfect win record? I think your motivation for prosecuting trials was so selfish. It'd be better for everyone if you never came back from the dead, Edgeworth. I see. Well, let me ask you something. What do you stand in the courtroom? What is your reason? Why stand in court? Well, if it was Franziska, she would also, uh, almost definitely say, I will defeat you this time, the instant she saw me. But, the courtroom is not a personal battlefield for prosecutor, prosecutors and lawyers. I stand in the courtroom to defend my client. To, to save their lives. To save your client, you say. Those who, th uh, those who think of only of their own ego-driven goals... Those kind of prosecutors are uh, repre reprehensible to me. <gasps> Even if you are a prodigy, or someone like you, Edward. Edward. It looks like there's still a lot you have yet to learn. A lot I have yet to learn? Me? <laughs> well, that's enough for now. That's, uh, a time... <laughs> Excuse me. God. The time when you will see is coming soon enough. What the fuck are you talking about? Uh. What do you think of this, Edgeworth? <laughs> Alright, I guess there's stuff I could show him. You son of a bitch. Where's the stupid idiot? There she is. Killed herself two years ago, huh? So this is before he became the... What was he? The... I forgot what samurai he was. God damn it. The woman is another key to this case. D do you really think so? She was Adrian Andrews, Andrew's mentor a long time ago. But suddenly, she was called away by a production, uh, and became Juan Corita's manager. And then, a few months later, Celeste Impax died. But... But her death was suicide, right? Yes. But there's still one riddle left unsolved. A, a riddle? Her suicide note. It went missing. No one could find it. What the fucking fuck, these stupid bugs! A suicide note that just vanished, huh? <laughs> it's Spark Paper. Man! Let's see if he has anything we need to talk about again since I presented something. Ah, missing suicide note. And this impact's death was most certainly a suicide. Of that, there is no mistake. However, we could not find her suicide note. That's when the police began to suspect that someone had hidden it. The suicide note? But how do you know Miss Impax had even written such a note? There is no solid evidence, however. 
Ah, we did find traces of ink in our right index finger. Which makes the likelihood of a suicide note very high. I don't know, that thing in the background, I think he has a suicide note to the right of Edgeworth. <laughs> that weird little squishy toy. But who would hide such a thing? The police think it was Mr. Wan himself. The, the victim? He was the one who found her body. Which makes him the only person who had a chance to hide her suicide note. Mr. Kureda hid his own manager's suicide note, but why? As long as her note is missing, any speculation beyond this is meaningless. For now, I think you should look this over. This is the suicide report. Part 1, anyway. Part 1? When the hell am I getting part 2? Hmm. I'm glad I'm not able to read it. Alright, I want to see that thing in the back. What the hell is this? Ah, oh, it's kind of cute. Mr. Nick, what is this stuffed animal's name? That's the Blue Badger! It was my idea. I made it. It's the, it's the pre a precinct's mascot, you know. Oh, wow. I'll get him a signed mascot of every police station. It's the last thing I do. I hope you succeed in your mission, sir. Well, I learned what that was. <laughs> the Blue Badger. This is the greatest. Alright. Do I present the suicide suicide report to him so he can actually tell me what it is instead of just say, "Hey, this is a suicide report." I don't like to look through reports. I like suicide reports even less. Worst of all, all the reports that have multiple parts like this one. This has two. Two parts. What you just had to me is the first part of the report. Here's the second part. The second part of the report is about an attempted suicide. Ah. The attempter's name, it's... Adrian Andrews? M Miss Andrews, what did she do? She... she tried to kill herself? She doesn't seem like the kind of person to try out and kill herself. You think she's a strong career woman? That is just her image. Adrian Andrews, she has a certain secret she always trying to hide. A secret? Codependency. That's the key word. Codependency? The word most unsuited to describe that woman. She depended on something. What does she depend on? What does she depend on? Drugs? <laughs> I like how that's the top one. So, how are Aaron, Adrian, Aaron Andrews? Aaron Andrews, the broadcaster. That's why I keep getting the Adrian mixed up. Alright, sorry about that. Um, so, how are Adrian Andrews and codependency related? Adrian Andrews attempted a suicide. It was a few days after the death of Celeste and Pax. And... And why did Andrew Andrews think about committing suicide? Quite possibly because she had lost her will to live. Lost her will, but... Why would she... Her mentor died, I guess? Her pillar of strength, her mentor, Celeste and Pax, was gone forever. That's why. Alright. Why would that? You fucking bugs need to get out of my face. I like these little mosquito bullshits. Is that what they call following someone to the grave? After her attempt suicide, Adrian Andrews started attending counseling sessions. She's a person who looks uh, for someone she can trust unconditionally. And once she finds that someone, she blindly follows them. Without someone to guide her, she feels uneasy and not, cannot carry herself through life. And that's... that's her codependency. When Celeste and Pax suddenly committed suicide, the world before her turned pitch dark. That's according to Adrian Andrews herself. Then, that means her super confident attitude. It's all a facade. She only, uh, she's only copying her mentor's behavior to hold herself together. How terrible. Huh. Well, that's interesting to learn something different about her. I'm taking a swig of water, and I'm going to start a new recording, by the way. 
I'm guessing this is the stuff we need to be able to unlock whatever secret she's hiding behind us for us. So, uh, yeah. Boy, my mouth getting... Is my mouth getting dry? Goodness. I think that's everything we pretty much got out of them, right? Let's see. Oh, whoops. Alright. Alrighty then, let's see. I just wanted to check those. That, that's what was happening. I just wanted to check uh, what it stated or if it was updated by any means. Uh, I just wanted to see if it was going to do anything like that, you know? But it would, it would tell me it would be updated when I do it to begin with, so whatever. <laughs> I'm just double checking. I'm always cautious and I kind of wanted to see what it, what it said. Excuse me. Alright, so... She was in on guard's room. Alright, we got a whole bunch of stuff to try to uncover her secret, huh? Alright, March 21st, Gatewood, oh god damn it, Gatewater Hotel, on guard's hotel room. Oh, Miss Andrew's here. But it looks like she's talking with someone. That's Franziska von Karma. Miss von Karma? What are you doing here? Um, well, you see, I'm his lawyer, so... You've got some nerve following me around here. Following you? Th That's you, Miss Von Karma. You're the one doing the following. Pearls. You're always following after that Mr. Detective with the letter, uh, little beard. Me? A following after Scruffy? Don't make me laugh. I'll show you something interesting, little girl. Was it a... <laughs> it's the Dragon Ball Scouter! What is that? An electromagnetic magnetic receiver. I planted a tracking device on that detective. And with this, I know the fool's every move. So that noise we heard was the receiver. I really feel really sorry for that poor Detective Gumshoe now. I don't know, he's having a pretty girl follower, why not? Even though she may have this kind of upper class, I'm better than you attitude. That just means deep within inside her, she's the most fragile, you know? It's just a facade. Facts say, I don't give a fuck. I heard it I heard it said as facade for the longest time, and then people told me that's not how you say it. But, you know. Different places say it different way. Just like the Canadians say AGAIN! Now then, let's stop wasting time. I like how it beeped the whole time when I was talking. Adrian Andrews. Y yes? I forgot to do her voice. Think hard about what just happened. Think hard about what we just discussed. Understood? Uh, alright. What are those two talking about? Miss Andrews, she seems a little dazed, doesn't she? Alright. I guess I gotta do the Magnetama thing. I guess Bon Karma left. I don't even know fucking whatever. Alright. Let's get everything let's get everything going. All those chains, baby. You know what's funny? They're just X's, you know. <laughs> the chains are on X's, which is interesting. If you if you haven't noticed, that's the kind of pattern they go for. Uh with the things they lock onto. It's an X. Motivation for the murder. Why was Juan Corita murdered? If you ask me, I think you know the reason he was killed. Um... Why are you hiding things? Do you realize you're putting Mr. On Guard's life in danger by your actions? Why do you ask such a question for which I have no answer? The truth is, I was not that close to Mr. Corita. You're not that close? That's right. I've never been good at being uh, intimate with another person. You're not good at being intimate with another person. Somehow, I highly doubt that. What's this, bitch? Hiya! Take that! You and Mr. Corita had an intimate relationship, did you not? A silly third rate cowboy article. If you even had half your wits about you, you wouldn't believe such rubbish. Well, it seems quite a few people brought, uh, bought, bought this into the story. Brought this into story. 
bought this story. Huh. As to be expected in a world f uh, filled with crooks and liars. Note to self, stay on our good side. In any case, I despise interpersonal relationships like that. I see. However, what if there was uh, a need for you to get close to someone? Me? No need to get close to Mr. Kareda? Need to get close to Mr. Kareda? As if there was ever such a need. Didn't you get close to Mr. Kareda for this per uh, person's sake? I like how they just set it up for me. Bloop! Bloop! Boom! Those locks are gonna be breaking, baby! Yeah! Alright. Celeste and Pax, your mentor. Why do you know? What do you? Why do you know about Celeste? Ah, Miss Impax. She committed suicide, didn't she? But it looks like no one knows why. Right before her death, she was uh, she was Juan Carreta's manager. So I believe you got uh, got close to Mr. Carreta so you could find out more about her suicide. You you have a great imagination. You may have a future, yet a slimy, uh, muckracker for a putrid third-rate tabloid. Miss Andrews? There is no mystery surrounding her death. None. It would be pointless for me to force myself into a relationship for nothing. Is that really true? Is there really no mystery at all? I don't believe you're completely at ease with the way her, her, her suicide was resolved. Says this little thing I have here. I think. Oh God. The second one, right? Get a hold of yourself. Huh? If you want advice on doing yourself in, I suggest asking someone like the police. Oh, the wrong one! What the fuck? God damn it. <laughs> I fucked up. You fucked up! You fucked up! Miss Impact's suicide note was never found, was it? It looks like the police were under suspicion that someone had hidden it. Like maybe the person who discovered her body? Mr. Corita? Juan? And Miss... And Miss Andrews, I believe you thought the same thing. That is why you became... Became into it with Mr. Corita. Break the wolf down! I've sat by quietly and listened to your insulting rambling long enough. It's true that Celeste was my mentor. However, 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 allow me to say this again. It had nothing to do with me. I didn't even know that her suicide note was never found. I'm a person who doesn't care about what goes on in the lives of others. That's the impression you like to give, however. I don't think that's uh, who you really are. What? I have evidence that says otherwise. This is proof that Celeste Impacts was someone very special to you. Alright, the, the attempted suicide report. God damn, taking so much health away, shit. Miss Andrews? You went through it too, didn't you? Went through what? A suicide. <gasps> Miss Andrews, you look and act like a very strong woman who has it all together. You don't ask for anyone's help, and you live by yourself. Yes, I've been very independent ever since I can remember. However, this is all just a life. A lie. A facade. A facade. A facade. You've always searched out people on whom you can depend on. But that's... You're dependent on Miss Impacts, aren't you? Which is why, when she passed away, you lost everything you had. S stop. When Celeste passed away so suddenly like that, I died a death of my own, but... No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't stop thinking about what had uh, become of her note. You must have heard about the police report. The one that said the police suspected Mr. Creator of hiding Miss Impax's note. You heard about it and I thought to recover from him by getting close, am I right? If that's the case, then everything changes. What, what do you mean? What topic did we start this conversation on again? It, it was why the victim killed. Exactly. Somehow, Miss Andrews, 
It seems that you've became the one most likely to want Mr. Corita dead. M me Miss Impacts was everything to you. And then she died. And he would do anything to find out why she killed herself. Even commit murder. M murder. Break the walls down, Jericho! Fuck you, bitch! Pay me! Give me my health back, bitch! Yeah! Sweet. Alright, motive for murder. Ow, I kind of screamed and kind of hurt my voice. Ugh. Alright. It's true, a woman who can only live in insecurity. I'm physically small and I don't re rely, really have a lot of self-confidence. I pushed against all that, though. I've tried to live strong. I never wanted anyone to find out the truth. Miss Andrews. This one thing, it's... It's the one thing I wanted to take with me to the grave. It was my secret. Mine and mine alone. I'm, I'm sorry. You probably think I'm a worthless human being right now, don't you? Please, Miss Andrews. All I want to know is the truth. After Celeste passed away, I heard that someone had hidden her suicide now. And that someone was Juan Correa. Celeste... Without her... Without her, I became scared. Everything, everyone seemed like they were out to get me. So you got close to Mr. Corita to recover her suicide now, correct? Looks like the tabloid reports the truth after all. Ironic, isn't it? Well, like they say, where there's smoke, there's fire. And if they purposely add fuel to the fire, they keep the celebrity world burning. But as for the suicide now, I didn't, I didn't, and wouldn't kill anyone for it. It just doesn't suit me, that's all. Well, that's enough for now. I still have work to do, so... I understand. Oh, I have one small favor to ask. My attempted suicide, I'd like you to keep it a secret. Hey everyone, did you know I attempted suicide? It was fun, right? Yeah, hmm, keep that a secret, bitch. Alright. Miss Andrews. If, if people found out about my weakness, I I would sooner choose to die than live. Uh, 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 alright, alright, alright. I understand. We'll keep it a secret. Miss Andrews. I guess she's always she's the uh, always thinking type. She never says anything careless, it seems. Thank you very much. Mr. Nick, can I ask you something? Uh, what is it? Miss Andrews has been playing with the card in her hand since a little while back. The card? Yeah, I guess she has. Miss Andrews, what is that card you're holding? Huh? Oh, this? I don't quite know. I just suddenly appeared in my handbag. Oh shit. It's fucking Madara. The shittiest, nah, oh, probably one of the greatest Naruto villains. Better than the majority of them. Fuck. I'll give him that. Even though he's not really doing anything right now. He has potential. Let's just say that. Alright. What is it? It looks like a seashell. That's what it looks like, doesn't it? I honestly don't remember owning this card. I wonder where I, where I picked it up from. Her not remembering something clearly sounds like it would be a rare occurrence. Well, I must be off. I leave Mr. Ungard in your capable hands. Alright, what do we do? <laughs> what the fuck do we do? I know what I need to do. I need to go unlock the fucking door, so go fuck myself. Alright, sorry if you heard a skip in the music. I had to go unlock the door. <laughs> For someone is coming into said house. Alright, I'll wait. The fucking box. Oh, hey. March 21st, Gatewater Hotel Hallway. Well... I think we got her about all we can. What about Mystic Maya? Is she alright? Oh, Pearls. She looks to be worn out by all of this. She hasn't slept at all and I hasn't been wa and has been walking all over the place with me today. What's wrong, Mr. Nick? Uh, let's go back to the office for a little while. You're really tired, right? Oh, no! I'm okay, really. Uh, I'm fine, I really am. 
I like the way she does that. She looks adorable. And when she makes the pretzel on her head bounce, because it looks... If you noticed uh, her little, um... I don't know what it was called. I don't even... I want to say it's a bun, but it's not. But whatever her little uh, tie-up of her hair is, that makes it look like a little heart. It looks different than her body, if you look at it, right? You don't look uh, fine to me. Alrighty then, I guess that says where we need to be going. Alright, Viola Hall. Oh, hey there, you sexy lug of a man. I like how they let me and everyone else go in and out, but everyone else gets to stay there in this luxurious hotel, eating all the leftover food. <laughs> Alright, let's see. March 21st, right in Cole offices. Oh, I guess we give two shits about time now, right? So, what now? Well, we did find one thing for sure. Miss Andrews has a motive. You mean Miss Impact's suicide? No? That's right. She was also the one to discover the victim's body. Clever. You know what's interesting? Took a drink. Um, I don't. I, I wouldn't even want pearls to be around with me, to be honest with you. When it comes to talking to talks of suicide and murder and all that stuff, she's too little to be around that. But you know, her first experience with us was. Someone being shot, then stabbed. Oh. So it's like... Ugh. Well, I don't think anyone... Did anyone get shot? I don't think the guy got shot. I don't believe so. I believe he was just stabbed. I think he... No, actually he was shot. Uh, I can't fucking recall. I know there was like two bullets shot. One missed, and then another one I believe shot him close range in the head. Alright, yep, there we go. Uh-oh. It's morphin' time. Zordon! What's going on? Okay. Ah, uh, Mr. Nick, the transceiver! Beep! Uh, hello, this is the law office of Red and Co. Mr. Attorney, you're not answering the phone. M Maya, where's Maya? As I promised, I have not come with a few feet of her this whole time. Yeah. Which is why I suppose she is absolutely famished. W what? So I just you want a quick acquittal, my friend. At any cost. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, wait, Maya! Let me hear her! Very well. Ask my... Maya! Is that you? Sis! Ask my sis! Maya! Maya! Damn it, he cut me off. Mystic Maya said asked my sis, didn't she? Sis? What does she mean by that? Come on, Phoenix. <sighs> You're a hopeless one. Sorry. Ugh. Hey! M Mia! I have a message from Maya, so uh, come, ask me anything you want about her. Alrighty then. Hitties. That's all I gotta say about her. Holy shit. Ah. How's Maya? She's safe. For now. The kidnapper's one to keep his word, it seems. I'm glad to hear she's safe. But Mia. How'd you know? As soon as she was locked up, Maya called for me. I read the note she left. And I gathered as much information about her surroundings as I could. I didn't know he could use spiritual channeling like this. Pretty smart of her. Alrighty then. Interesting. The kidnapper. What? What's he like? I don't know. Apparently, Maya went to answer the phone call at the hotel and was drugged there. And she didn't see the face of her attacker. Ah. Maya's locked up in a very dark place right now. I tell you, uh, everything I heard when I was there with her. Uh, when you with her? Date? I don't know. Time? I don't know. Location? I don't know. Uh, I'm starving. I could really go for some apple pie. I mean, at a time like this, we start the only way to go. I have to stay positive. He promised he wasn't going to kill me. I'm not going to die. Sis, I wonder if you're with Nick right now. Oh. 
Oh, look, I'm playing Maya right now. Huh? Someone dropped the card here. Kind of looks like a business cards, but there's no name on it. It's the Jigsaw Killer! Ah! <laughs> Leaving Joker cards everywhere. Hmm. It's a picture of a seashell, I think. What a strange card. There's all sorts of things piled up here. It's too dark to see. What's this? It feels like there are a lot of glass bottles here. And these... They feel like barrels! I'll pass. Too bad I'm really hungry and not really thirsty. Drat, it's locked. But this door lock seems easy enough to open. On TV, the hero always used a plastic card or a stiff piece of cardboard. They click, they magically open a door. I wonder if there's a card like that around here I could use. Ah! Uh, that's it! The shell card! If I use this, maybe I can get the door open. This might be my key out of here. I had a feeling this card might be useful. I'm such a genius. Alright, now if you excuse me, Mr. Kidnapper. I did it! Okay, now I'm getting the heck out of here. I shouldn't keep Nick waiting, or worried. What? Aww. Oh. <laughs> what the f- <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? Uh, no, no, that's a cliffhanger. I know people have been saying, like, man, Luna, you've been doing cliffhangers. I've always been doing cliffhangers, just that people actually care about the playthrough enough to uh, be sucked in. But I think that is about it for today. I'll end up recording this, and then I'll probably record a huge chunk tomorrow, or not even, or maybe the, in the whole case to begin with. Um, because they did say we have one day to do so, but I don't know if Maya um, being set free is gonna have to do with anything, you know? But, alright then. Until next time, everyone, my name's Luna. As always, stay frosty. I love your faces. Kisses.